Hi everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. It means a lot. Um, my hope today is that you learn something of value and that you can keep spreading this message on to other people. That really is the point of us taking the time and effort to make these videos that you guys are learning something, that this information is going to be a benefit to you so you can make the best informed decisions for yourself and for those around you and then you can take that information and you can keep getting the word out and keep spreading the word to other people so we can not just stop the flow of information here but we can keep educating many 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 more people around the globe that is the hope so if you're watching this video thank you again for taking the time to do so we really appreciate it i really appreciate each and every one of you and i hope again that this information is of value to you and that you can take it and share it with anyone else around you. Um, all the information that you'll be seeing today we have archived and easily accessible so if you're interested in receiving any of the articles that I will be citing here and that have been used to make this video please go ahead and just send me a comment down in the, in the, in the description and I'll be super happy to send you all the articles. Um, I always encourage you to do your own research yourself and to look further into these articles and, and again keep thinking for yourself. I always encourage that you be thinking for yourself, researching for yourself and ultimately coming to conclusions for yourself not from any other influence from other people or corporations around you um, or even me. I hope that these decisions can be just purely based on unbiased information and that they can benefit you in the best way. Um, that really is the goal here. And I found that in these difficult times for a lot of people, the best way to generate hope is to educate oneself. By educating myself and having to learn and research and comprehend and therefore put together these videos ultimately for you guys to hear about, I found that it really helps to give me an inner peace and really helps to give me a hope about all the situations that are happening around us when we are looking at unbiased information, when we are looking at these, these facts and diving in just a little bit deeper to find the truth it, it really does give you a, a sense of hope and a sense of ease from simply just leaving behind ignorance and diving in deeper to understand these things for yourself. So that is my hope for you, that you would take this time that we have on our hands now at this point to really be looking into these things yourself and to um, be making the best decisions for yourself and to hopefully after all of that be feeling a, a lot more hopeful as we're surrounded by so much negativity in, in these times. And just by educating ourselves and learning other things, it really helps us to look at things with a different perspective, with a new lens, one that, that allows us to live a life without fear when we look at information that has no bias, that has not been tainted um, by, by anybody here. Our, our agenda is simply, again, to deliver truth. We have no, no benefit. We are not gaining anything by sharing this information with you. This is purely based um, on wanting the best um, for each and every one of you and to get this information out to as many people as possible. Um, so with that being said, we have a really exciting video today. Uh, last week we did a video, we put out a video every Wednesday, and last week we did a video talking about COVID-19 and simply looking at pure scientific numbers to get better data for ourselves to understand the irrational fear we came to see that, that really has paralyzed the world. Today we have um, another great video. We're going to be looking at uh, the most frequent and popular COVID-19 claims and concerns. Uh, and also we're going to be looking at immunity and specifically how something such as nutrition and chiropractic from a chiropractic standpoint can help to strengthen our immunity and strengthen our overall well-being and state of health. Um, this is really important and really interesting because you see a lot of people really focusing in on, on the monster, the bad guy, or this virus, but they're not really talking about the underlying issue or cause of so many of these deaths considering the, the targeted populations at risk here are the older populations, are the older, sicker people already with immune-compromising conditions. Therefore, 
it's really important that we be looking at, at the underlying cause of immunity and be diving in deeper into understanding our immune systems and therefore how to be proactive and preventative in our, in our care towards our bodies and towards our immune systems to ultimately strengthen them. So when flu season comes along next year, it is of no bother and no concern to us. So we're gonna be looking uh, a bit about that and hopefully that also will give you some hope and some practical ways that you can start strengthening your immunity for yourself in a natural way that's going to support your body. All right, so let's begin. A lot of people's biggest concern about the coronavirus is the mortality rates that we see skyrocketing every day and at a very, very quick pace. Um, here we have up, if you can see, this is from Worldometer. It is updated just into the point of literally making this video. As you can now see, we're at 79,066 deaths, 1,386,807 cases, and 297,583 recovered. So it definitely is uh, on the rise, as we are all very well aware of. And that is the number um, from the world meter again that, that everybody's looking at to, to get a basis for how many, how many deaths we're seeing in the world right now. So again, 79,066 deaths according to the world meter we are, um, have seen from the coronavirus thus far. And in the Business Insider, they claim that the global death rate up to that point of writing the article was 4.7%. So these numbers look pretty high when you see that amount of deaths and you see how many people recovered, the recovery rate we can see is pretty good. We'll look at that um, a bit later about more specifically the recovery rate. But when looking at the deaths, we see that these numbers look pretty high. They, they look pretty scary. What can that mean? This has only been going on for a couple of months. This looks like a lot of death. Is this abnormal? What I want to do and what I want everyone to remember is that when looking at these mortality rates and when looking at the numbers that we're going to look at today, we really need to put them into context, we really need to get some perspective. Because when trying to gather and understand facts, it's so important that we broaden our view. Because if we never had looked at mortality rates or these numbers or this information before, and only now we are, then what do we have to compare them to? We, ha we have no comparative basis then for the numbers we're seeing. We might just be looking at them now, considering it's of interest to all of us, and seeing that 79,066 deaths seems like a lot. But if we never looked at that compared to other cases, other situations, and other years, how would we know where that lands on the scale? So that's also what we're gonna be looking at, not to compare coronavirus, its severity of the coronavirus itself to any other disease, but simply to be broadening our perspective, looking at the other pandemics and the situations that have happened around the world, and how this one compares so we can hopefully rationalize this fear that has, um, that has the entire world in a panic. So that is the number up till now, but if you remember from our last video, and in Italy alone, according to the National Institute of Health, only 12% of their deaths showed direct casualty to the coronavirus. This is super important to understand that. Only 12% showed direct casualty to the coronavirus. So you have patients, and one might have coronavirus, they might die for it. That, that might be in the 12% in Italy alone. But another one might have had coronavirus, but they ultimately died from maybe the, the leading disease in the United States, the leading cause of death, which is heart disease. Maybe they died from heart disease, had coronavirus, but it was assumed to be death by coronavirus, so that's contributing to a lot higher numbers. So we have to understand that talking about Italy alone, these numbers are extremely exaggerated. And we saw this um, according to the Bloomberg article in our, in our last video. Um, saying that in the way in which Italy counts their deaths was extremely generous. If Italy is doing it, I cannot imagine that other countries wouldn't as well um, for, for these global numbers to all be more exaggerated than uh, maybe necessary. This is for Cent Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, again from the CDC. If we just look at this here, we can also see in the US the same thing is going on as happening in Italy. It says, it's important to emphasize that coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 should be reported on the death certificate for all descendants where the disease caused or is assumed to have caused or contributed to death. So again, if one of the leading causes of death in the United States, which kills many, many people as we're gonna see and is very common, is very popular, such as heart disease, were to kill this patient, 
but they have assumed it to be, or, or assumed that the coronavirus has contributed to that death, they will still mark it not as death from heart disease, but as death from coronavirus, therefore highly exaggerating those numbers, and not having true numbers on how many have actually had direct casualty from coronavirus. So these numbers we cannot depend on, these numbers are not scientifically sound, um, and they are based on assumptions in multiple countries. And, and they, it says it from the, the very CDC itself, saying that they, they count the disease as uh, death from coronavirus, whether it's assumed to have caused or contributed to the death. It doesn't matter. We're going to see a lot larger numbers there then. So that's really, really important to understand when looking at these numbers. All right. So again then, is, is the virus that killed the 12% our biggest concern, or what about all the immune compromising conditions or the other illnesses that had contributed to ultimately the deaths of the other 88% of people that didn't die directly from coronavirus? What's really the issue here? Is it that we do not know how to take care and maintain and strengthen our immune systems, or is it that this virus is just so deadly killing only 12% of the people in Italy? So we're going to look at that when we look at immunity a bit later, but just keep that in mind. Um, so if we look at the number of deaths in Italy, which is 15,887, again, according to the, to the world meter at the time this video was made from coronavirus, and we keep only the 12% that had direct casualty from COVID-19, we get a number of about 1,906 deaths. All right, so it's, let's see, if we conclude that only then 158 people have died in one month time, from coronavirus in Italy, from that 1,906 deaths in total. We also see that there's a 50,000 um, people death rate in Italy every month, according to generic causes. So that would mean that from these numbers, we can conclude that coronavirus this month has contributed to 0.3% of Italy's deaths. Just looking at these numbers, again, the Bloomberg article stated it itself, we know Italy is generous in this, we know this 12% is, is the only percent that's being, um, that is directly linked to coronavirus, and so by just simply doing the math and looking at those numbers, we would see that coronavirus in one month would only have contributed to 0.3% of Italy's total death rates. So this is our, our outrageously high number, 0.3% coronavirus contributing to this. Uh, out of 50,000 people that die in every month in Italy from generic causes. Again, we're seeing a, lots of deaths around the world, and when we look at these numbers compared to other years, we'll see that they're just as high. People have illnesses, people have conditions, and all of these can be better taken care of and better avoided if we take care of our immune system. But we're not taught to take care of our immune system. Well, taking care of the immune system is not promoted. It's not a... a uh, subject um, that they want to dwell on. What's dwelled on is the, the big scary monster, which is the virus, which is killing a lot of people, which then we are going to need some magical cure for in the form of a vaccine because it's already gotten so bad, the population's already so weak because we were never proactive in our healthcare system, and while people were descending on our descending health value rate, we never stopped them at any point and said, hey, let's maybe support and strengthen the immune system so we can start ascending, and when we get something, we're not going to get as bad or we're going to heal a lot quicker and we're just going to be safer overall because we have a stronger, more adaptive immune response. Instead, um, we are filled with toxins around our world and we're not taught about our immune system. We are just taught that the virus is a killer, the virus is a monster, and then if it comes along, our only hope is going to be the vaccine. That's very doomsday, that's very at the end um, of the point where, where we have no other options because we haven't been, again, taught how to take care of ourselves. Um, which is why I really wanted to focus on immunity in this video as something that is not talked about nearly often as enough and that a lot of people um, should understand and be better educated about how they can be taking care of themselves. Uh, okay, so let's keep going. So again, we saw 0.3% uh, of monthly deaths from coronavirus in Italy, so these numbers are severely reduced when we actually get down to direct casualties. According to the CDC, 65, sorry, 655,381 people died from heart disease in 2018. Okay, so let's look at these numbers. Let's pull these up so you guys can see them. I want you guys to see this. It's 
pretty important. Right, let's try to make it full screen. All right. So, I don't know how well you can see here, but what it's basically talking about is the 15 leading causes of death from uh, the CDC themselves. This is from 2018. That's important to note. They have not updated, unfortunately, 2019 or 2020 um, leading causes of death inside uh, the US. So we're gonna be looking at the 2018 stats. We have number one is diseases of heart, number two, malignant neoplasms, number three, accidents, number four, chronic lower respiratory diseases. Sound familiar? Okay, we look at the deaths. We again see, as I mentioned, 600 and 55,381 deaths in 2018 in the US from diseases of the heart. Uh, what I want to mention is, is interesting these days. Around this time of the coronavirus, or around January when it began and has been brought up constantly and is such a topic of discussion in our world, you're, you're hearing a lot of deaths from coronavirus, deaths from COVID-19 deaths from this virus specifically. Well, we have already looked at how these numbers are exaggerated and how they count their deaths is so generous that most of these deaths, according to, in, in only in Italy, 88% of them were not directly caused by coronavirus. Um, so we can already see how the death rates aren't as, as high and people um, aren't dying as often due to coronavirus as we're being told. But also, have you heard lately of, of those dying from heart attack, of those dying of stroke, of those dying of pneumonia, these, these huge uh, causes of mortality, not only in the US, but around the world, all of a sudden there is complete silence around the world according to any deaths of that. And you might say, well, because coronavirus is, is killing more, because it's more important. Or is it? Look at these deaths and look that in 2018 alone, diseases of the heart, the, the number one leading cause of death in the US, killed 655,381 people in one year. Only diseases of the heart. Only in the US, not even around the world. This is huge. That's a huge, huge, huge number. Now imagine that that huge number of people in the US is still dying from that because that would be an issue with the heart. Again, the underlying causes are never addressed. The immune system and our lifestyles are never addressed. Therefore, we have these, these heart diseases. And imagine that these people are still dying from that. Because again, we never got to the cause. So they're still dying from it, just as 2018 and 2020 today. And they may or may have not contracted coronavirus, but their death, whether it was due to the heart disease, which is an extremely popular death, was contributed um, by coronavirus and therefore assumed to be death by coronavirus. So these high, high numbers, only again in the US, these aren't even global numbers, are showing us that when we are assuming deaths by COVID-19 from underlying issues, which are huge in the world, heart disease being number one, killing that many people in 2018 alone, how exaggerated we're gonna see this coronavirus when coronavirus is getting all the credit, this virus is getting all the credit for all these deaths and all these mortality rates that we're seeing be huge. But if we ever looked at this, if this was of benefit for the pharmaceutical companies to promote that there's a lot of heart disease that's killing a lot of people, let's get some drug out, some vaccine for it, then we would all be worried about that because that's a pretty high number for one country in one year. But again, the coronavirus is now in this time, which is again why we have to look further back, dive a bit deeper in, look at the agenda, look at the authorities, look at the people who are involved where they're being financed from, and when we do that, we really discover, or I have discovered, and I hope that you do yourself too, that these are all the same corporations, these are all the same groups of people, but just purely by different names, and that they are all looking into this and being financed by the same exact people, which are, the, again, the same people, these vaccine manufacturers, and these drug companies that are gonna be making the cure. So there's a clear conflict of interest there in promoting a problem to then promote a solution. So this is, this is pretty scary because if they benefit from the solution, then they're also gonna benefit from creating a problem. And, and this problem is, I'm guessing, not in your best interest. If you think about this for, for a moment, and I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but if you think about this for a moment, the healthcare system would not survive, it would no longer be a system if people were actually healthy because then they wouldn't come to you to buy the drugs, to get trapped in the cyclical cycle of sickness, of disease, to keep coming back, and to keep financing them, and to keep paying for these things. 
If people were actually healthy, there would be no healthcare system. So do, do you think it's in their best interest, these people selling these drugs and selling these vaccines, to make you the healthiest so that you don't come to them and give them your money anymore and don't co-depend on them? Or do you think it's in their best interest that a virus comes out, that it kills many people, that there is a global panic, and that, don't worry, this vaccine coming out, which I think we, we saw in the other video was, or was around a $375 billion vaccine revenue for the coronavirus vaccine. This vaccine coming out is going to be the, is the cure. This is going to be uh, the magical cure that's going to cure you all. So, so don't worry. And think about how much benefit that is to them and how much money is simply in it for them and, and how that contributes to the conflict of interest. So I just encourage you again to start asking yourselves these questions, asking yourselves can we trust these people that are in place of taking care of our health, that are, are, are mandating this global healthcare system for us. It is our interest, uh, is their interest for, for our benefit, is their interest in our best interest and this is why when I say that we the people are only going to be the ones to look for the people I really mean this because there's a clear conflict of interest when the people doing the studies are the people selling the drugs all right again we have nothing to benefit from sharing this information from giving this information so I, I encourage you to always look at the sources and see what they have to gain because usually there is a, a huge financial component that creates a huge conflict of interest and that is uh, does not generate scientifically sound science or numbers or truth and um, if we don't have truth, then, then we're not gonna be able to achieve health. So again, we wanna, we wanna deliver this truth in, in the best way possible so that you can make these informed decisions, that this information can be fully disclosed to you. All right, we're, we're really, whether you believe in, in something like vaccination or not, what we can all agree, what we can all unify and fight for together is simply the freedom of speech, the, the freedom of disclosure of information of these vaccine ingredients so that we can make the decision ultimately for ourselves based on all those ingredients if we want to go inject that to our kids or not. And that has not been the case. And we have been deceived and mothers have been deceived and children have been deceived and, and that is the problem and that is the point where it is not okay anymore that we not be disclosed with that information and we therefore be making ignorant choices based on um, non-transparency from these companies that ultimately can or cannot do us damage or that ultimately we, we maybe would have made a different decision so uh, whether or not you again are, are pro or against I just encourage you to, to always be um, standing up for your freedom of speech and uh, simply of knowledge. So anyways, there's that little tangent. Let's, let's keep going. Um, what I wanted to point out, which was interesting, is that the fourth uh, leading cause of death in the US, according to this, this CDC website that I showed you guys, chronic lower respiratory diseases. We see the coronavirus as a, as a lower respiratory disease, which means anything basically below the neck, so it's going to be really concentrated in the lungs. And this had killed in 2018 159,486 people. Chronic lower respiratory diseases. So if it killed that many people in one year in the US alone, and now all these deaths, um, whether it was from the fourth leading cause of death, which would be quite common, um, from lower respiratory disease, whether, whether the death was directly caused by that or from the coronavirus, it's going, it can easily be assumed as coronavirus. So the, the direct casualty rates and mortality rates of these deaths do not coincide and uh, that's really what I wanted to, to share and um, we repeated it a couple times but just to really get that point over in your head that this is in 2018 alone and lots and lots and lots of people have these underlying causes of death and these numbers um, have been uh, contributed to and have been accredited to the coronavirus getting all the credit for these these death rates that have always existed. In 2018, we didn't have this, this pandemic, we didn't have this COVID-19, and still we're seeing that many people in the US die from these leading causes of death. So if, if the virus is getting these credit for these numbers, we're gonna see highly exaggerated numbers, 
we're going to be looking at the 88% um, in Italy's case and, and not the 12%. So again, look at your numbers and um, hopefully that can kind of ease your mind and, uh, and ease your nerves about uh, some, some scary monster virus that seems to be wiping out the world. All right.